Hello folks, my name's Fred. Thanks for stopping by. It's midsummer 2016 and the antique engine show uh, season is in full swing. I just returned from four days at the New York State uh, steam engine show held in Canandaigua, New York. While we were there, I had a really great time chatting with my friends, including a friend that is a fellow YouTuber. His name is Paul, aka Max Runout. At the show, Paul very graciously gave me this KNT hat. Now, this hat special me because Paul has had these hats custom made and he sent them other out to other YouTube YouTubers that are well known in the machining world. I'm honored Paul and thank you very much. While at the show um, last week it occurred to me that although I made videos of my World War II gasifiers in operation on my channel and I bring them to antique engine shows quite often I've never really given a YouTube explanation as to how they work or why they were so important in World War II. So before I unload this unit, let's do just that. Gasification is a process. The unit that makes the gas is called a gasifier. Gas is produced through a process called pyrolysis, which converts almost any biomass directly into highly combustible gases, which are hydrogen, methane and carbon monoxide and they can replace gasoline. Gasifiers were widely used in Northern Europe and in the Scandinavian countries during World War II when gasoline was virtually impossible for the public to get. There were between 180 and 200,000 of this, these units made by different manufacturing companies. They used the gasifiers to power milk trucks, coal trucks, lumber and other delivery type trucks, public buses, private cars, taxi cabs, and even motorcycles. This unit was designed to power a four cylinder or small six cylinder vehicle and was man manufactured in Albero, Sweden by the AB Gasifier Company and it's a charcoal gasifier and burns lump charcoal. So we're going to go handheld now and I'm going to walk you through. Okay, well I'm going to we're handheld now and I'll try to be as steady as possible. I'm going to take you around and show you the various the various components. This component right here is a 12 volt fan. It is used in the initial startup of the unit by pushing air through this pipe and into the combustion chamber. Uh, the air intake is actually through these little fins right here. It's used to power up the unit and get the fire going inside. And once the fire is up to temperature, uh, it's turned off just before the engine is started. Again, this is the pipe that delivers the air to the main unit. Inside here is a check valve that allows air to go in and only when there's either a pressure towards or pet pressure towards the system or a vacuum on the other side of the system when the system is drawing. We'll go to the top of the hopper now. This is the hopper. We'll jump up on top. Okay, this is where the charcoal goes in. Again, this is the charcoal gasifier. And down in the bottom is the combustion chamber. And you, if hopefully you can see the three orifices that the air is pushed in. This unit would be totally filled with charcoal. And then this lid would be brought down and secured. It's tough to do with one hand. Hold on. There, like that. Now it's airtight. Okay. So we have it filled with charcoal. We come down here. And 
this is the lighting port. You'd put a little flame in there, a little uh, t twig with a flame on it to catch the charcoal on fire or paper or little pieces of wood and catch them on fire. It's also a uh, way to inspect inside. And then this goes shut. So now we've got the air being pushed into the system. We've got a little forge like uh, combustion going on here. And now the, the pump is pushing the sooty air through this pipe right here. This is a cyclone filter. Uh, the cyclone filter uh, through its makeup, the air spins and centrifugal action pushes the fly ash and such out to the edge and it falls to the bottom. And this is a clean out door. There are a number of clean out doors on here and they all work exactly the same. They untwist and then you could clean the fly ash out of here but during operation the doors, all the doors are closed. And the bottom here is a pipe and that pipe is where the centrifuged gas, vortex gas that goes up into this system. And this is a system of cooling pipes. The hot gas is cooled through these pipes as it travels through. And the gas by the time it gets to this side is cool, cooler. Remember when you're going down the road, this, this, these pipes are being cooled by the motion of the vehicle. The gas then goes down through this pipe and would go all the way to the front of your vehicle. Uh, it would then come into the bottom of this filter and inside this filter is a filter medium. I think I'm going to try to, it's very difficult with one hand, but let's try opening it up. Okay, before I take the filter medium out, I'll explain this. It would be filtered here, the final filtering, and then it would go through this pipe, and then this unit would be mounted to your intake manifold of your car. This one has never been used, so the, the holes aren't even drilled for the, um, the manifold. So the gas would come through here and go into the manifold, being sucked by the engine, and air would enter here. And there's a butterfly valve, where is it, right there. And there's a butterfly valve here. And this would be attached to your throttle linkage, your accelerator linkage. You know, let me see if I can get this off and I'll show you the bag. Hold on. There's the filter. It's a little discolored, but that's uh, canvas. And the canvas is pulled together with uh, wire. And that's a, a canvas bag that's uh, a spare. I'll drop this back in. There you go. And of course, the cover would go back on top. So that ex that's the operation of it. Again, there's more doors here. There's a door here where you can see, sorry about that. You can see the end of the tubes, hopefully in there. And there's another door on the other side. And what you would do, the maintenance on this is, is basically th three things. You'd run this brush through the tubes. It's a long, flexible brush. You'd run them periodically every, every 500 miles or so. You'd run them through those tubes to get the soot out. That's one maintenance item. Another maintenance item is to blow off the soot that collects on 
that, that canvas bag as I, we said before another maintenance item is to take the fly ash out of here then the last maintenance item is to take the ashes out and this is a door the grate for for sifting the for sifting the uh, ashes out are right here and I don't know if you can see in there or not there's a that's the grill okay that's where the ashes land and you'd close it all back up everything is has to be airtight there can be no air leakage into this system under operation because you want to inter introduce the air at the very last moment at the, at the mixer it's not called a carburetor it's called a mixer so that's the explanation of the gasifier one other thing is this would have been mounted to the car through frame extensions they would have extended the frame of the car and then they would have had some attachment like this where it would be bolted to the back of the car there's other styles of cars that had these on trailers with extra wheels or sometimes they would just remove the trunk lid and put it in the trunk whatever they could do to to get it running so let's give you a wrap up here these gasifiers are critical to, in, to keep vehicles in northern Europe and in the Scandinavian countries moving in World War II when there was just no gas after the war these units were all but destroyed uh, the people there was gas again and they didn't need to use these and they these war weary people did not wanted to be reminded of the pain of World War II and what they had to go through this one's rare for a couple of reasons one it's a survivor like I just said two it's brand new it's never been fired so this is a new old stock unit built in 1941 it's one of the rarest of the rare because it's never been fired uh, final thing there are a lot of alternative alternative energy enthusiasts out there that are using newer and improved information and materials and are making very efficient and reliable gasifiers uh, just go to Google and um, you can get more information that you would ever want to know about them I uh, hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give me a thumbs up and maybe subscribe and get future videos bye for now and thanks for watching